Intelligence officials are investigating how extensive Abdul Malab's uh, connections are to Al Qaeda and how serious a attack this, uh, how serious a threat this attack presented. Is Al Qaeda trying to flex its muscles with a new wave of terrorist threats? Republican Congressman Pete Hoekstra of Michigan is the ranking member of the House Select Intelligence Committee, and he joins us now live. Uh, uh, Congressman, I know you have probably had the, the opportunity to be briefed. Uh, tell me what you learned as much as you can. Well, I've learned uh, much of what has already been reported in the media. You know, it appears that this individual has ties to Yemen, has ties to Al Qaeda. That's probably the thing that concerns me the most. Uh, you know, has the Al Qaeda leadership, the franchise, uh, Al Qaeda franchise in Yemen, have they made it part of their strategic plan to attack the United States in whatever way they can? You know, this guy uh, was probably tied to Al Laki, the American born Iman. Uh, who now is in Yemen, Major Hassan, the shooter at Fort Hood, was also tied to Yemen uh, and was also tied to Iraqi. So are we starting to see a pattern here? Uh, one of the things that has emerged in just the last hour is a report which is also now confirmed by our Fox News reporter Catherine Herridge that the U.S. intelligence has known about this guy for perhaps as long as two years, that he was on a watch list, but he was not on the no-fly list. What do you draw from that? Well, that's a, that'd be a very disturbing conclusion if that were the case, that if we've known about this individual for two years, we probably would have known some of what he's been up to over the last two years. Being in Yemen would be uh, something that should quickly elevate this guy from a watch list to a no-fly list uh, to a, uh, you know, something we should be very concerned about. But again, we may be seeing a pattern here. Uh, we we had the emails between Major Hassan uh, and to uh, Alaki, and that didn't raise red flags. Are we seeing here uh, a breakdown in our intelligence community that when we see these red flags, we're not recognizing them and responding appropriately? But that's going to require uh, investigation and oversight by our congressional committees. What, what do you know about the device? It has been uh, a dev sort of described in various ways, sophisticated. Uh, we heard from uh, Benny Thompson earlier in this uh, in this program uh, that it's been described to him as an incendiary device. What do you know about it? Well, I think uh, a description as a, uh, a relatively uh, somewhat sophisticated device that would be incendiary uh, and explosive, big enough to cause a catastrophic failure of that airplane. Uh, and I think it does generate, it does recognize and acknowledge a an evolution in al-Qaeda's tools and methods, the types of methods uh, that they have at their disposal that will allow them to get by screening checkpoints at airports and get these devices onto airplanes and get them into other environments where they can do significant damage. Al-Qaeda is continuing to evolve and develop the tools to bypass the screening and the protection mechanisms that we are putting in place. Do you, do you know, Congressman, uh, based on the, uh, the briefings that you've gotten, were there any red flags that should have gone up or did go up that we missed? Well, uh, again, I don't have that information right now, Brian, but this is, you know, the report that uh, the AP and that you have just confirmed that says we've known about this guy for two years. Uh, that raises a red flag for me because I think that was relatively uh, obvious and the intel, intel community uh, could very quickly identify that this guy had been in Yemen and was probably in contact with Alaki. Those are two major red flags. Alaki, you know, was identified way back in 2001 in 2002 as having known three of the 9-11 uh, hijackers, his connections with Hassan. These are the kinds of questions that we have to get more information on. The White House uh, has been totally unwilling to share that kind of information with us. They've blocked us on the Hassan information, they've blocked us on getting information on Yemen, and they've blocked us on getting information on Iraqi. I think, uh, you know, Congress needs to push to get access to this kind kind of information to answer exactly the kinds of questions that you're asking. Congressman, we can't tell you how much we appreciate you uh, taking time out of your holiday to join us here in America's News Headquarters. Well, Al-Qaeda Al doesn't take a holiday and either should we. Congressman, thank you very much. Thank Good to you. See you.